Hello, my fellow readers. This is I, Dark Symphony 777, with a fan fiction review. As always, a link to the story will be in the description below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, and leave a leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts of the story or any other fan fictions you want me to review, read, or review. And as always, this is my opinion. My opinion is not indicative of everyone else's. So, uh, first off. The last story was a big O. That kind of gives you a hint of what fan fiction I'm going to be reviewing this time. Um, the reason I came back to Big O is because uh, I wanted to double check to see if there's any new Big O fan fiction. It's mostly from Galaxy 1001D. Because I know, because I wanted to know if he updated and finished the next story of his Big O Season 3. And I came across a couple fan fictions uh, written by this guy named Act of Paragon. Uh, paradigm, of course, referencing the city that Big O takes place in. And uh, as a bit, and as a fan of Big O, Big o, Big o was one of the first animes I have ever saw, and it was probably my gateway anime. It was like that, that's the funny part. Most people say, "Oh, it's Pokemon or it's uh, Dragon Ball Z." For me, it was Big O and Yu Gi Oh. Those were my those were my gateway animes. And so once in a while, I always gotta go back to them. Go to those two specifically and say, hey, let's see if there's something I, I, I like, just uh, just on a whim. And I saw a couple stories. Uh, I've, it's this one, uh, Dorothy Finds Her Negotiator, uh, Crime Pays, and the author's own version of Season 3. Uh, season 3 one, that's not going to be for a while because I at least want to do uh, Pimp's Treasure Chest 2 before I work on that story. Not to mention the story is really, really structured, weird, and like an episodic uh, chapters. So I have to figure out how I'm going to review that story specifically. But I can review this story. Uh, so Dorothy Finds Her Negotiator is basically a sort of retelling of the very first two episodes of Big O, i.e., Roger the Negotiator, Episode 1, and Dorothy, Dorothy, Episode 2. It's just they're told from Dorothy's point of view. Now, Dorothy was kind of the reason why I kind of loved Big O, because I really liked her character. I liked everyone's character. Uh, Datsun, he was a nice character. Norman just reminded me of what would happen if you made Alf uh, Alfred from Batman completely awesome. Uh, Roger Smith was also Schwartzwald. He was he was a great villain. I really love Schwartzwald. I didn't like Alex Rosewater um, as a villain. That's just me. I think he was kind of. I think he, he he kind of fit into the story, but I think he's still compared to Schwartzwald. Alex Rosewater wasn't as great a villain. Uh, I also like. I also was really confused by the ending, which I guess is why you know a lot of these fan, a lot of big old fan fictions are based on a hypothetical season three. But I digress. So, before we get into the act, this the plot, we have to at least discuss the actual plots of the episode because because it kind of plays into this. So, Ro let's start with episode one, Roger the Negotiator. Uh, it takes place at the beginning. It's the episode that started it all. Uh, the episode actually starts with Roger going to this negotiation. He kind of talks about himself saying he's a negotiator in the city of Amnesia. Uh, and he meets Jason Beck, otherwise known as Beck Gold. Uh, and he basically, see, he runs in, this is where we also meet Dorothy. Uh, Dor, he's doing a negotiation, he, he has a case full of money, he tosses the money in, he gets Dorothy. Uh, Saldano says, oh, that's not my Dorothy. Roger, you know, you know okay, he's not playing fair, but, and he finds out Dorothy is a robot. Uh, and then this big, the actual Dorothy, Dorothy One, which is this mega, uh, I guess you could say homemade mega deuce, is trying to steal all these, uh, rob a mint by being controlled by Beck to take all the plates, and then Big O destroys him. And then Dorothy, Dorothy Episode 2 is Dorothy kind of passes out at the end of Roger the Negotiator, wakes up, kind of feels, looks, um, acts more human. And spend time with her father. And then his, her father dies. And Dorothy kind of becomes robot again. And then Dor uh, Beck kidnaps Dorothy. Attaches her to the corpse of Dorothy 1. And, and tries to steal the money again. Because, you know, Beck Gold is a thief. I, I, eh. I didn't really like Beck Gold either. I like for Rosewater. I kind of like better than Beck Gold. Because he at least fits the world. Beck Gold is just there half the time. Um... I do, I do think, 
this one's kind of hard because this is actually going on a very what should be a simple premise usually having a story or if you're doing something based on a TV show basically an alternate retelling from a different point of view that it, that's pretty much an easy way to write a story you just okay here's what this character thinks uh, there's a fight going on um picture Let, let's picture like hypothetically um, we have I, I, I can't think of anything uh, I can't I can't think of anything um, I don't know <laughs> okay let's have okay let's let's think of a hypothetical situation we have guy a we have guy B and in the background there's a guy C um, and so the story is kind of portraying uh, guy A and B as fighting and stuff like that and then someone actually makes a story telling, well, the, the fight from Guy C's point of view. That's basically what this is. Uh, just telling these stories from Dorothy's point of view. And it works to a point, but the sto but my problem with the story is it feels empty. The plot is basically just what I said about, you know, with the episodes. They're just basically these two episodes from Dorothy's point of view. That's about it. Nothing really substantial outside of, you know, uh, uh, Timothy Wainwright, uh, you know, bashing her with a hammer, uh, her possibly having a second personality, kind of a robotic and human personality, kind of having to, and her kind of having to switch between those. And then the human side, no, not the human side, uh, one of the sides eventually kind of slowly disappearing, except she loves Roger. This is another one of those stories where she likes Roger. I have no problem with that. Um, in terms of plot, it, 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 this is why I don't like these, these are kind of, this is why I don't like it when people fail these kind of stories, because it's such an easy way to do this, but this version just feels empty. I don't know how to describe it. It's one of those things that it's very hard to describe, uh, how, how to properly do this from another point of view while, while, while trying to put in the moments of the story you don't it, it feels kind of empty on one hand it kind of fits the world of big o with you know this neo-noir uh post-apocalyptic uh amnesiatic uh world because you know big o is one of those animes that is like you can't it's very very hard to describe on paper because you know it's everything doesn't make sense unless you watch every episode and even then you just get more questions and answers so it's very very hard to figure out what is big what is the whole deal with big o it's one of those animes you have you literally have to watch instead of being told what it is because if you don't watch it then you'll ever never understand what anyone is saying at any different any concurrent time uh but it, it feels empty it, it feels like it's going too fat it's going it's one of those stories that i can't really get a handle of what's wrong with it it's there's something missing of it it just feels empty to me in terms of the plot fine the plot is fine nothing bad it, but that's the best but on the other hand it's, it's the plot what i have a problem with uh, it's one of those things like i can't describe more because of what big o's about more than any more than what is that what what's wrong with it inherently um my guess my my idea is there's just not enough substance to kind of warrant this story i think maybe if you know we got at least a little bit more of her thoughts on everything going on maybe uh care development that Dorothy's the really only character, uh, kind of, sort of, because, all, because you know, everything's taken from her point of view, so therefore, you know, she's the only character that really kind of gets the development over the course, because there's not enough screen time for Beck, for Timothy, for Roger, for Datsun, for um, Norman to actually get enough screen time to really get a feel for the characters. If you watch the show, then you know what they're like, um, but, Dor but this story was all about Dorothy. And I think the author did Dorothy justice. Uh, Dorothy's kind of a hard character to pin down because of how complex she is. 
again, that's crediting towards the source material rather than anything the author did, good or bad. It's just, there's some characters that are very, very hard to pull off, and I always felt that Dorothy, if there was a story based around Dorothy, she'd be one of those characters that is just very hard to really get down and, and get a proper character on her. She's just an enigma. She she's basically you don't know what's happening. You don't know her. You don't really know her character. You don't really know her motivations. You don't know her uh, thoughts on everything. So it's hard to pin Dorothy Wayne right down. Uh, grammar. I didn't see anything wrong with the grammar. Uh, pacing. Pacing was fine. It's probably my favorite. Probably the best part uh, structurally of the story. It 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 feels like an actual episode of Big O. It's just you know it's kind of a bridge version because we're going. Because in those two episodes, Dorothy doesn't show up all the time because the show takes place from Roger Smith's point of view. Uh, do I find anything wrong with the... Uh, and that's it. It's just, uh, I think maybe you could have went out longer with Dorothy, the Dorothy Dorothy section because it's about 13,000 words. And more than half of the story is dedicated towards Roger and the negotiate. I think uh, it could have been paced a little bit more in Dorothy Dorothy. Uh, giving giving us at least a little bit more context on what's happening, uh, but it still feels na it still feels somewhat natural. I just it's just this one's just more wishful thinking than anything. So would I recommend it? I actually would not recommend the story. Before before you jump on me and say why you don't want to recommend the story, you keep re you recommend all these stories, all these stories because one my opinion and two is that feeling of emptiness that I get that's why I don't want to recommend it because uh, this just be this is one of those cases where it's better to get the full story and I think the story is actually better told through Roger Smith's point of view and through the idea of anime so so as much as I want to recommend this story because I'm a big fan of big O, I just really can't I just can't imagine for me with the story as it is right now, uh, to recommend the story where when it it's just if you want to know more the better information, just watch the anime. Uh, I don't know if Big O has a manga, but you know it's better. It, this is one of those stories where it's better you just watch the anime rather than read anything. Uh, maybe season maybe his take on season three would be better. I don't know. But this story, taken as isolation, it's a decent enough story, but does not. But it really does nothing in the grand scheme of the lore of Big O. Doesn't really accomplish anything. It doesn't do anything different. It's just, it's just there. Um, favorite part? I don't really have a favorite part. Um, that's that's about it. Uh, I don't really have a favorite part. It's just nothing. It's just nothing that stands out to me. And that's about it. Uh, it does. This story actually does give insight on the writing style of Act of Paradigm, especially when I get to the other two stories, specifically uh, his own version of season three. And I want to see how that compare and contrast with Galaxy One Thousand One D's version of season three. Because, you know, he had, like, ups and downs. I, you, you can go back and review and read those reviews and watch those and read those stories um, and understand my take uh, on everything. Do I think this is a good story? Mm, it's, it's, a, it's an okay story. But it does gift me with the idea of what, what the author is going to do. With season three, and that's probably the only reason why I remotely like it because it, it's at least pumping me up for seeing how he would do season three, like the post uh, Big Venus and the post battle with Big Foul. How he's going to incorporate that? How he's going to incorporate Angel, uh, Dor Dorothy finding love because you know the story is like okay, Dorothy loves Roger. Um, what the author is going to do in Galaxy One Thousand One D? He did the whole. He did kind of the same route. But he kind of made it too reference heavy, and you know, if you read if you read those stories, like check out the videos. Uh, he did he did like a lot a lot of references to Batman, and it got really tedious and annoying at times. And I want to see how what the difference between Axe version and Galaxy's version is. 
Uh, so maybe probably a running theme between those story, wait, between uh, each of those reviews because I'm probably going to have to review each chapter individually based on how it's structured and probably my own predictions of, you know, comparing and, contrast, comparing and contrasting uh, Axe and Galaxy's version of Season 3. Uh, so I actually can't wait for that. Um, so this has been Dar this has been my review on Dorothy Finds from Negotiator. I'm sorry if you know I don't personally like it. That's you know it's just me. Um, this has been Dark Symphony 777 and cut. <laughs>